night. Life and times get back to her where I can write in my memoirs and it's been a whole year since I last wrote for you in this episode. And we're at Christmas, hence why I've got some time here now to write in what's been going on in my life. I tell you, the last year and a half has been an an uncontrollable nightmare. And we tell you here about the ups and downs. Me and my dear Gupta are currently uh, in a row. I've locked him up in a prison for his own good. And that bloody idiot Jay Stones is my new husband. I'm trying 
my artist to put the Bachelor Brothers and the company as the state and making us the royal families. But we've had some problems. I tell you, let me just uh, get some scotch and put some more bricks on the fire and I tell you all my problems. Oh, dearie me. That was lovely. So, as you know, I was elected in January 2020. And I took office a day later because there was a major troubles with oil prices and the international airline companies were not coming here. And my brother, uncle, old Mr. Bachelor and young Mr. Bachelor decided to put an oil embargo on the aircraft carrier cruise ship on the coastline. And they were shooting around in their tanks. I tell you, the government didn't know what to do. So, they had an election. And as all of the people, well, about 50% of them are related to me, they all voted for me in a board meeting. And they all went out and put their secret ballots in, except one. And that was Gupta Sanjeep. He voted for Justin Stone. I tell you, this was a moral the same, so I decided that I was going to confront Gupta on what Gladys Mildred Jones, Abba Gavani, Abba Dare, Pontefried, Pontefract, Abba Tower, Cardiff Canal Hall, Sorkham, Hughes, Williams and Fand in her investigation of Captain Philos Bartholomew Ross. And may one add, Captain Philos Bartholomew Ross now works in the civil service of uh, my country. The Republic of Nunus. So, when uh, I decided to run in December 2019, and I decided that I was going to be president, I went to my uncle, old Mr. Bachelor, and we came up with a plan. He brought in the CEO of the political company that we own, that if you remember from series one of my book, The Life and Times of Dick Bachelor, that's currently a podcast. That basically we own a company called Wurzburg PLC. Now, the only CEO of the company is a very good chap. She also works in the supermarket in our department store as the canteen manageress. Her name is Teresa Summers. She used to be a failed politician and very frigid. I must tell you at this point that by January 2020, me and Teresa were married and we adopted a new child together. And with my other children and Teresa, the new mother, and she will go down as wife number one. And I will tell you what happened at Christmas 2020 now. It was a fun sight because normally, and this is what Jay Stone's bloody idiot number 31 went wrong at Christmas when we were married the first time around. I go out and I buy my partner's family and my partner and a nice set of pyjamas matching slippers a dressing gown a teddy bear with CCTV in the eyes and a GPS locator in the middle so I always know where they are security C life insurance life insurance and then I have embroidered with B Jazz's diamonds, Dick Bachelor, and then their number. So for Teresa's numbers, I had wife number one put on. Well, actually, she's wife number two because there was Sing Sang Young from China. 
Lovely woman, I must tell you about her sometime. It didn't go well because she's become a nun. But she still likes to be. Now, where were we, my dears? Oh, yes. We were talking about my election. It was a tough campaign. Running against me was the opposition, Justine Stone of Ugly Sister, number 31. And I tell you, it was quite easy to take her down. I draw to a fact. So I tell you about J, J Stone's title later. Because we're going to give you a full update over the next three days. So, Leroy O'Leary is currently sitting in the aircraft car here and it's 2020. Justine J. Stones, who is now known as Justine, uh, won the election. But we weren't going to have this as the Bachelor family. We couldn't have one of them running us. We wanted to build an extension to our house. Gupta needed a swimming pool because he was no longer allowed to go out. He was having an affair with Captain Philos Bartholomew Ross. Jay Stones wanted me to keep him in a cage like he's an animal. They wouldn't even give me planning permission to put in a hot tub for him. Love him. What was he meant to do? I tell you, I still love my copter, but he's been a very naughty boy and he has to stay in jail until he learns his lesson. But till then, I'm having the funds. So my wife, Teresa Summers, won, uh, uh, organised a coup d'etat. But she had some help from Uncle Old Mr Bachelor and Uncle Young Mr. Bachelor, who decided that they were going to blame the only person that they can blame, Leroy O'Leary, their brother, because he causes all the troubles. He's a troublemaker, and he always takes the blame because he's the middle child. So, we are finding ourselves at a coup d'etat. And we did win, just because we had some help from some foreign help. We're not going to tell you who because we can't. We can't give out this information. But my little island of population of 5,000 is doing wonders. We've increased the, the production of our manufacturings. We... Bachelor Brothers PLC now provide the cable, the TV, the water, and our supermarkets are opening too. And we've been open seven days a week, 365 days of the year. No Boxing Day off. I believe that together... Oh, sorry, I'm reading the speech that I'm going to give tomorrow in front of the Parliament when I tell them that I'm the new king and they can't get rid of me. Oh, well, I tell you, from my head of the civil service, Captain Philos Bartholomew Ross, I tell you, after I confronted him about the affair with my dear husband Gupta, I allowed Jay Stones to deck him. This was 20 minutes after the coup d'etat. So, we had the BBC TV, or Bachelor Brothers TV, or Bachelor Brothers Corporation, to be precise, television news, uh, sitting outside with a camera, and they caught it all. They put it on everything. It went around the, it went around the island like there was no tomorrow. The papers, it was in everything. Jay Stones was disgraced and there was another election two days later and I won. I won by deep pull, I think. Oh well, so I allowed Captain Philos Bartholomew Ross to angle some peoples. I made him head of the civil service and I told him to stay away from Gupta and I put spies on him. In fact, her name is 
Gladys Mildred Jones, Abigail, Abigail, Ponte Breed, Ponte Frat, Abigail, where Cardiff Canal on Slocum, Hughes Williams. And she has been made Inspector General of the Civil Service and Cabinet Secretary responsible for the Cabinet. She is the right hand woman behind me. Just don't tell my wife Teresa Summers because she might file for a divorce and a scandal might cripple me. We have to also get her made crazy too. I can't wait till my dear husband Gupta comes back. Once he's learned to be a good boy in mind. Now, we are also putting out rumours about Jay Stones and the Well Moffat, if you remember, a man. They were seen together last year on Bachelor Brothers Corporation TV News yesterday. And we know this is true because I've had this country, I tell you, in a permanent lockdown. You see, I've learnt that as the government, it is a lot easier to keep everyone at home. I know where everyone is. I can keep an eye on them. They're not mingling. And the best bit is, they're not planning to overthrow me. See, with everyone locked up at home, and the army on the streets, and the navy in the ports, and the air force flying over, we can do this. Oh, sorry, that is the speech I'm giving on New Year's Eve. Oh, I'm getting really confused, yeah. So, I've got to give a speech on New Year's Eve, I can't wait. I, I'm going to tell you what I said now to win the election. So it started like this. My dear comrades, I believe that our country has been robbed and that we won the election fairly and openly. That bloody idiot who was elected, illegally mined, punched a citizen. A loyal citizen who's been at sea for many months. Captain Philos Bartholomew last year served in the Royal Navies. Of the only when we had a king. He is a good loyal chap to the country. Served uh, mysteriously and with distinction. How dare a bloody idiot smack down a good loyal seafaring man. I want the better society for my children and for their children and their children's children. This is why in this time of great joy and uncertainty I, Dick Bachelor, am the only way to get us through what is to come. Our country faces economical problems. Our major employer, Bachelor Brothers PLC Limited, has pulled out. We cannot sustain our benefits and our health system. Because it was owned by Bachelor Brothers PLC. I put it to you. Putting in frictions on the personal welfare and the personal property and the people is not what this country is about. If you elect me as your president, my government will may end this policy of discrimination against the Bachelor Brothers. So that's my speech and it, it, it did wonders. I won hundred percent of the vote. So my inauguration was 20 hours after the election result. We didn't want time like Justine Easton Stor J Stones to uh, like a coup. So we needed to take up power quickly and we needed the soldiers to swear their oaths of allegiance to me, Dick Bachelor, President. So we saw, and I tell you at this point, there was grave news coming out of Wuhan in China. Uh, 
there was a, something called COVID-19. I got my investigator person to look at this personally and to give me an update data. I am planning a holiday too and we also have to get as many people as possible to and from the airports because we need to reopen up and we've got to get the economy going. We've got to get the, business, the cruise ships in. We've got to go, go win. We've got to get go win. And this is what I was like in January 2020. But lo and behold, the next three months was a, was, was a confusing time. And since then, the country has been in a permanent semi-flux lockdown. Like I said, I found it easier. I did an experiment back in January 2020 with my dear husband Gupta. I built the extension of the house. I refused to let him go and grounded him. I told him he could stay in the house and he could stay in the garden. And he may go for a walk around the block because we live in a gated community. But he can't leave. It turns out I noticed in Gopta's productivity as a husband and as an employee of Bachelor Brothers PLC Limited it increased by 100%. He was devoted to me and Captain Philos Bartholomew Ross at this point because he helped me get elected was sent as the ambassador to the Channel Islands to the Barclay Brothers for advice. So, at this point, Gladys Mildred Jones, Abbot of Any, Abbot Air, Ponte Breed, Ponte Brat, Abbot Awe, Cart of Canal, Slocum Hughes Williams, who was also head of the Secret Service after I got promoted my job. She decided and brought me a whole plan on what to do with certain members of the family and friends. So, she advised me to put trackers in J-Stones, but also to put a security detail on it just in case, reporting directly to me. That's her, not me. So that's what we did. Oh, I tell you, she goes to McDonald's more times than I get to remember. And she was meeting the Noel Moffat. Shocking. It really is. So, after my inauguration, I then continued on my plan of Tyrannitarian regime. I decided after I was watching the tanks that these tanks needed to be used. We got 300 tanks and they just sitting in a car park not being used. Gathering dust. This is a waste of resources. And we got men for the tanks. We got weapons for the tanks. We got the tanks. And they just sit in there. So I decided that we were going to have an evacuation drill of the military bases and we're going to move them 200 miles west of where they all are. So I called in the chief of the defence staff. He's a good friend of mine. He's Gupta's brother who used to be ambassador to Germany. He's also now a brigadier general. And I told him my plan. He told me that I couldn't do it. I said, I'm the commander-in-chief. If I want to move my bases 250 miles west, they're going to be moved 250 miles west. He told me... He told me that if I move one of the bases 250 miles west, it'd end up in the middle of the ocean. To which I said, don't we have any aircraft carriers? Make them an amphibious force! Bloody details, I tell you what is it with these idiots. Then I said to him, you watch your tone. I don't take cheek from your brother and I'm not about to start taking it from you. 
asking what happens. Ask his wife Sheila. That reminds me. In my inauguration, Gupta's mother, his mother, his mother, mother's mother came to join us. Oh, she looked lovely in a Sarali. And I tell you, Sheila sat next to her and they were getting on like a house on fire. And my dear wife, Teresa Summers, was there. Um, and it was like a family event. And then my mum, uh, Rosemary's, and, uh, and my uncle's old Mr. Bachelor, young Mr. Bachelor, and my aunt, my sister Sheila, and my other sister, the sister, and all my children, Francis, looked a treat, I tell you, even wore the same clothes as Daddy. And my new son, Loming, Sheila held Loming, because he's only young, see, and we, you know, the people love him. I tell you, he was in the middle of the magazine and he sold copies, hundreds of copies. They also went out and bought the clothes he was wearing from the department store. That line has now been reproduced 51 times. Oh, the profits of running a country and owning all of the resources. Some people call it communism. I just call it good business. So, when we won, I decided that I decided the amphibious force was the way. So that's what I did. Captain Buffalo Muros was sent off as an ambassador, so I couldn't see him. Gupta was arrested and put in a jail. When at home, and I decided it worked. When the government ministers came and told me about COVID-19 and I witnessed what was going on, lockdowns everywhere, I knew this was my time to act. I rushed through emergency legislation proclaiming me in charge of everything. I sacked the Prime Minister, who was Noel Moffat's brother, Hubert. That's Hubert Jones Moffat. And he is actually a man. And he was fired. My nephew, Bobby Darlan, is currently holding him under the basement where he's chained up to the radiator. Bobby said he can come out when he learns that Uncle Dick is in charge. Isn't Bobby a good boy he's learnt from his mother Sylvia who is now in charge of the prison service because Bachelor Brothers PRC Prisons Department has privatised the prisons and Sheila's the first Sylvia and Sheila are the first joint CEOs. Sheila also has responsibility for the security services and my personal protection. You know, she carries like me, bricks in a handbag and a gun. She is the love of my life. If only she was like my dear husband Gupta. Firstly, a husband and not a woman. See, I guess I do know I got a wife named Teresa Summers. But compared to my stale wife, Teresa, Sheila loves everything I do. We go shopping, we go on the cruises. We go to the United Nations together. We also go on state visits. And the best thing is, she never has her photo taken because she's head of security. So she's never trying to upstage me like Theresa Summers does. This is why when last time I went to the United Nations, I left Theresa at home. We up that. I said... As we are under lockdown regulations, it's not wise for you to travel. You stay in here too. She didn't like it because Gupta has seniority. She thought that she was in charge. She couldn't even get a boat through the house on what TV show they were watching. Gupta won that one. So, at the inauguration, Gupta's family came, my family came, Jay Stone's family even came. We put them right at the back, in the loser's box, because I won. 
Yes, yes, I know we did commit a few acts of crimes, but I've pardoned everyone. No one can be charged, and there's nothing to see you. And if anyone's got any questions under the law, it's illegal to ask them. And if you are gathering in more than your household, this is a criminal offence with a 50 million euros pounds fine. And if you can't pay it, we'll put you to work. Don't you worry now. Our legal system believes in the fairness and the equality of putting a criminal to work. Sorry, this is the government speech that I'm currently writing for the Home Secretary. I tell you, she has been abysmal in this job. And it's my dear wife, Theresa Summers. I'm thinking of making her the Minister for Whimsiness because that's what her policies are doing. She's managed to cripple business, cripple the economy, and me. I'm currently driving around in an electric scooter because she decided that she was going to have driving lessons. Have you ever heard something so stupid in your life? So, she was driving around in my BMW convertible. And I needed to go to parents' evening now for Looming. Looming has been doing wonders. And Sheila, na Sheila couldn't come because I give her the slip. And me and Theresa Summers, because the, P, the press were there, went off to the school. It is a nice boys' school only, run by the brothers. That's the Bachelor Brothers Schooling Department. Not the Catholic Brothers. Different family. So, let me tell you now. I got to put on some more logs on the fire and I need to get some more paper because I'm writing this down as I'm doing it, see? Because it's all coming to my head. And uh, we are planning much for these memoscripts to be given out across every school so my the children of my nation know who the king I mean president is I believe that our day will come to love me oh sorry I'm now reading you the speech I'm writing when I publish my book oh I, sh I should really get a proper assistant to sort my papers out because, you know, it is so confusing being me. So much work is a busy day. You wouldn't believe what crosses my desk. Now that speaker of the House of, Com House of Commons is an idiot. They won't let me go in and watch the debates. Something about parliamentary conventions. So I decided that I was going to put them on a little break. To be precise, abolished it. And moved all of the power and the national security laws because of the pandemic into my office. It's just easier if one department is running things. Because it's less confusing for the people, see. And I want the best for my people. Not one of my people has been hurt by this disease. Because I've had them locked up since March 1st, 2020. And they're not coming out anytime soon. But we've installed a new TV system that every citizen charges for. Fiber optic broadband with 5G connectivity and allows people to work from home. And we've also given special consideration to delivery drivers. And people working in supermarkets. All of your food is delivered. You order it online through bachelorbrothersplc.com. You also order your clothes and everything. It's a bit like Amazon, but they banned you. Your TV and entertainment all comes from the Bachelor Brothers Corporation. And their TV service has 400 channels, 100 of them devoted to sport and 
50 of them devoted to the life and times of Manchester United Football Club. Uncle Old Mr Bachelor is a firm believer in Manchester United. So, all of the services are now provided by the company Bachelor Brothers, Narumbi Limited, PLC. This is known as the Crown Service of Nabumbi. I have decided to enact legislation on New Year's Eve that will reclaim me king from New Year's Day. We are not going to have any more of this trouble of arguing riots and coup d'etats even though I caused them from my people again. Uncle Leroy O'Leary is now spending 20 Five years in one of my jails, and not a jail like Gupta and Teresa Summers. Uncle Leroy O'Leary got to blame, and this Christmas is I'm going to sign a pardon for him. He's currently been in jail through the pandemic and for about two years now. So I signed a pardon, and he was let go. Uncle old Mr. Bachelor and young Mr. Bachelor picked him up from the prison with the with this sister, my mother, Rosemary's. And they went for ice cream, just like what they used to do when they used to come out of school. Because Uncle Leroy O'Leary went to a different kind of school from the Bachelor Brothers. This kind of school was called a Bosto. Uncle Leroy O'Leary as the stable folk said, is a troublesome young man. This is why he didn't tell his brothers about his wife, who he had been married to for 25 years, with 27 children and 87 grandchildren. And old Mr. Bachelor, if you remember, was seen walking across water because he was livid. And he said at the time, they're not even Beverly or Rosemary, as she's now calling herself, rang up this match debt. So, Victor Manuel is doing wonders and he's working. And if you remember, he's my son and he's working now in charge of the cruise ship company because Captain Philos Bartholomew was trying the civil service, the foreign section. And he's doing a wonderful job running the company in a worldwide position. Uncle old Mr. Bachelor said if he keeps this up, he'll buy him that swimming pool he wanted when he was ten. Isn't that nice of him? I don't have the art to tell the 104 year old man that my son Victor Manuel is now 42 years old. But you know, each and to their own. You know, he's been waiting 30 years for the pool, so you might as well wait another 30. And he's already got three pools on his house. So, Jay Stone's bloody idiot insists that he's not crazy. And the doctor, Dr. William Shabago Jones, very good chap from Arley Street in London, psychiatrical doctor, knows what he's talking about, said that Justine Stone is manic depressive craziness and shows all signs of a recovery once we uh, let him back out in the community. The good doctor is currently sitting in the prisons uh, waiting to be come up in front of a judge for assault on me. I can't believe the tissue of lies that I'm hearing from someone who's meant to be a man of the medicine. He was telling me many lies about Jason Steen Stone, just Stone's uh, number 31. Uncle Leroy O'Leary got put in a neck because of one of these people giving witness testimony. I tell you, I'm going to make an example of this man. He is lying. And when I marked it, Jay Stones has been declared a blibbering idiot by the courts. So, as Jay Stones is now my ex-husband again, and husband number 34, 
It leaves me good to tell you it's been a fun time trying to run a country. And I got to tell you tomorrow about my first overseas visit. I was so nervous. And I've got some more speeches to tell you about. I love you and I hope you are well and having a lovely Christmas. I'm going to drink some more sherry and whiskey together. Because I am a blibbering idiot who is incompetent and can't remember what's going on. Oh, sorry, that's the, the resignation speech for Theresa Summers. I really need to get someone in to sort my papers out. And I really need to get ministers who can make their own speeches. Who are actually capable of doing the job. But if I do that, I may look better. Or worse. And they may try and sack me or put me in the neck. So, I can't wait to tell you I'm currently in Scotland on my visit privately to Sheila's father. I thought it would be nice to visit my ex-husbands who I'm still currently married because I allow marriage uh, between man and woman and polygamously so I'm not actually cheating. You, you know, it's allowed under the law, so thank you. So I will see you soon and we do lunch. Yes? Okay. Bye bye, love. Oh, I hope you're having fun. And I really don't know what's going on here. Yeah? Ah, here we go. Thank you for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you on Christmas Day and Boxing Day and possibly maybe New Year's Eve and New Year's Day too. We may think about some other things and this is a nice sight and installment of how I become the political leader of Narumbi. Goodbye, my loyal friends. and Thank you for tuning in and buy my book. And that's it for this week's episode. Add us to your podcatcher or on iTunes now so that you can make sure you never miss out on another second of our wonderful podcast. We would hate for you to miss out. Have a great week, everyone.